It's the KSO show. I'm Derek Young. Going to be a solo show this time. And, you know, as what seems to be the case nearly every week, we're, we're a little bit behind and we didn't really, we weren't able to stick to our, uh, the podcast schedule, the KSO show schedule that we would like to during the season. And again, apologize for that as we apologize every week. If it's starting to get irritating, I do understand. And, and again, we do apologize. But we're going to look at the important matchups of this week's game between the Kansas State Wildcats and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. It's the Big 12 opener in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Not really a matchup, but I will just point out a few, few keys in this one before I get to a real matchup of any sort. And I think, you know, the team that's able to start fast will, will definitely have an advantage in this one. I don't I think either one of the offenses for K-State or Oklahoma State is really equipped to play from behind. Now, I say that when, you know, I think the Cowboys did just this past week against Boise State. But in general, I don't think either offense is typically equipped to play from behind. A two-possession game will probably certainly feel like a four-possession game just because of the limitations of that side of the ball for each club. Uh, field position is going to be important, obviously, because if you do have a limited offense, if you are able to string together long drive after long drive at a at a pretty regular clip, then short fields will certainly help you out. Kansas State was the beneficiary of that against Nevada. That'll have to continue against Oklahoma State on Saturday if they want to walk out of Boom P- P- T Boom Pickin Stadium with a win. In terms of matchups, now I'm just getting into it right now, and and I. You know, I'm going to surprise some people. I think the passing game for each for each squad is going to be vital. I know that we're talking about teams that really want to run the football, play good defense, not make any mistakes, and that's the winning formula. That's why I think the passing game is going to matter because turnovers are a part of the game. Turnovers are going to be important in this one. It kind of goes hand in hand with the field position battle, and the turnovers are likely going to come in the passing game because we're talking about two teams that haven't really shown a great ability to do so. Uh, Oklahoma State has Spencer Sanders at the helm of their offense. He missed the season opener. Uh, this is his third year starting, I believe, and you could almost make an argument that he's regressed throughout his career, particularly in the passing game. Uh, he's a he's a walking turnover, very explosive playmaker. Obviously, he can make some things happen with his legs, and and maybe he's probably the most dynamic weapon on that side of the ball for the Cowboys. But he's also the one that's you know more prone to making poor decisions for Kansas State. They do have Will Howard at the helm. He'll probably share snaps again with Jaron Lewis. Skylar Thompson's getting closer and closer, but I would be surprised if we did see him on Saturday. Maybe he'll dress because I did think he he moved closer and further along this week than, than most thought he would. But at the end of the day, I think, and I'm not saying that the team that's able to throw the ball 30 times is going to win. In fact, if you, I can make the argument that the team that throws the most of the two in this one is probably the one that lost because they probably were able, weren't able to dictate their own terms. They probably had to throw on the terms set by the other team's defense. And you'd, while each team is going to force the other one to throw, and if you want to win, you're going to have to be efficient or throw enough or find the explosive plays in the passing game just enough to win but if you're you're sitting there with 28 to 30 a passing attempt you probably lost the game because you probably had to, had to throw more than you wanted because you were playing from behind or you were down late in the game so i don't think it's the team that throws the most per se that will win this game but it's going to be the one that took care of the football that was able to throw enough to win because you're not going to be able to throw for 90 yards or 13 times and win this football game. Um, You're going to have to throw enough to win because both of these defenses are good enough to dictate the terms at least a little bit to, to where you're not going to be able to solely rely on your own running game. So can Kansas State take care of the football and throw enough? Uh, I think they can. Will they? The challenge is being at a road venue, and it's not a COVID year. So Stillwater, T. Boone Pickens Stadium, that place is going to be loud. It's going to be raucous. It's probably going to be full. It's a night game. That's when you really get the best crowds for each venue typically. Will Howard hasn't seen anything like that before. He hasn't played in anything like that before. Yeah, he's played a lot of football. He's, he, he saw his share of road games last year. They were at pretty – quiet stadiums with when the atmosphere just wasn't the same the environment wasn't the same so can he take care of the football when that stadium is at a fever pitch and everyone knows how Stillwater is they're banging those paddles or you know 
on the sideline in the first row, the students are, and you, you hear that they're like 10, 10 yards from the players. That's it's as close and as uh, intimate of an environment as there is in the big 12 in terms of, you know, I, I proximity to the field, they're, that stadium, that crowd, that's on top of you more so than any other site in the big 12. So that can also alter the passing game. But can you do enough in the passing game? Can you throw just enough, but not too much? There's a there's a happy medium that one of these teams is going to strike, and it's going to be why they won the football game, probably in conjunction to a fast start, because a fast start could say that other team's playing from behind. Let's say someone gets up 14 nothing in the first quarter. Not saying they will. Not saying it's Kansas State. Not saying it's Oklahoma State. I'm saying anyone. They get up 14 nothing in the first quarter. It's going to be tough for another team. Do, do, does either side have the offensive firepower or the confidence in their quarterback or, you know, a, a past, you know, a, you know, a body of work that, that is indicative of a team that can do that, that can come from behind multiple scores. Like I said, could be a fast game, could be a, a very low number of possession type game. And with the offenses already being a little bit, passing challenged aerial challenged a two possession game in this one kind of feels like a taller task than most two possession games hot start matters taking care of the football matters short field matters field position matters it's those little things and it's where really where kansas state dominated in those margins and allowed them to pull away from nevada in the fourth quarter aside from running the same play over and over again in the wolf pack not having an answer for it, but you got to dominate and win in those margins. The team that is able to do that will win, but I think it does. If we're talking about a matchup, what happens in the passing game, even though it's going to be not as robust in terms of quantity as what each team will want to do in the running game, what happens in the passing game will certainly determine, be a large factor in determining how this game concludes. All right. The next time you'll hear us probably talk a little bit about the coordinators I'm Derek Young. You've been listening to the KSO Show. Tell your friends.